Dear viewers, today our topic is physical well-being, medications and recreational activities. Kindly note that this is module 3, unit 1. I am Professor Karunesh Saxena, Vice Chancellor, Sangam University. Our learning points for today are like this. There will be theoretical learning outcomes as well as practical learning outcomes. For the theoretical learning outcomes, we will try to explain the importance of physical well-being for elderly people. We will also discuss different types of interest, hobbies and maintaining their social connect. We will try to understand the ways to do medication management for elderly people. And finally, we will talk about various recreational activities with elderly people on daily basis. As far as the practical learning outcomes are concerned, there will be many exercises for you dear elderly caregivers that will demonstrate the procedure to provide prescribed medicines to elders, then also demo to demonstrate how to assist elders with various health related activities such as yoga, meditation, walking, free hands, etc. So friends, now let us begin with our theoretical learning outcomes and first segment is importance of physical well-being, medications and recreational activities. What role they play in the lives of elderly people? As an elderly caregiver, you should understand the importance of all these things so that you can inculcate in them good habits related to these aspects. So first we talk about the importance. Importance of physical well-being, medications and recreation. The first and foremost benefit that we can derive out of these things is health and longevity. All the elderly care givers must understand that the regular physical activity helps elderly people in managing their weight, reducing the risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, osteoporosis and also improving overall health. The elderly people should be told that it is the longevity as well as the healthy life both are required. So, for this reason, we want to engage them in various such activities. Next, we come to mental health. All these activities reduces stress, anxiety, depression, etc. in elderly people. These activities help them in remaining engaged in the social and recreational activities and so that they can also be rid of loneliness and feelings of isolation. As far as medication management is concerned, that is also very important for elderly people. You will agree that regular health checkups following medical advice can prevent lot of complications and improve their quality of life. We always believe that good health can be possible with preventive measures. Independence. Elderly individuals can maintain their independence for a longer time to continue living in their own homes, pursue hobbies and enjoy fulfilling life. So they can be independent rather than being dependent on anyone else. Next is cognitive function. Staying mentally engaged through various activities like puzzles, crosswords, games and other social interactions help them keeping their mind sharp. Quality of life. We firmly believe that engaging in various enjoyable activities enhance their day-to-day -day experiences and general satisfaction with life. So we know that the quality of their life can be greatly improved if they are engaged in all these physical activities, pursuing their hobbies, engaging themselves in recreational activities, social outings, picnics, etc. 
all these things will help them remain both physically and mentally active. Friends, we now move to the second segment that is different types of activities and hobbies for elderly. What are they? Let us understand in these slides. Types of activities and hobbies for elderly people. First and foremost is arts and crafts. Very easy for them to engage them in painting, drawing, pottery making, knitting, crocheting, sewing, woodworking or any other form of creative expression which gives them lot of satisfaction. Gardening is another very good activity because tending to a garden, planting flowers, growing vegetables or even indoor gardening can provide lot of relaxation to the elderly people. It gets them connected with the nature. They are helping the environment also. If they are living in big cities, the kind of greenery that they will be maintaining in their household can provide good quality of oxygen to them and can also help in the proper temperature control in the household also. Another hobby is reading and writing. I firmly believe that reading books is the best hobby that one can have. So engaging them in reading books and if they are having any physical impairment or visual impairment then as an elderly caregiver if you can read out books to them and nowadays there are many uh, such uh, apps are also available such as audible which can be book reader for them. So writing poetry, memoirs or even starting a blog can provide endless entertainment. These elderly people are having wealth of knowledge and experience. So their blogs can provide proper direction to the youngsters in society. Next is music. Music can also be a great relaxation. So learning to play a musical instrument, singing or simply enjoying music through listening can be an excellent source of joy. There are many elderly people who are very very fond of music and so there can be a music lovers party or picnic where these elderly people can be provided an opportunity to sing songs and give expression to their feelings and emotions. Physical activities such as yoga, tai chi, gentle stretching exercises, walking clubs or even dancing can promote physical well-being while enjoying the whole scenario. During the morning walk, we have found that there are laughter clubs. So becoming member of such clubs and such activities can also be good physical activities for elderly people. There are many indoor games such as board games, solving puzzles, crossword puzzles etc. Playing card games can provide lot of relaxation, entertainment as well as social interaction. Cooking and baking. It's not it's not particularly for the female elderly people only because there are many male also who enjoy cooking. So trying out new recipes, baking or cooking traditional family dishes will keep them engaged. If possible they can join some cooking workshops also. Volunteering. Volunteering work for a cause they care about can provide them a sense of purpose and social connection. So they can go out in the neighboring neighborhood and they can create some socially meaningful activities. Technology and learning. Exploring technology, learning new skills online or participating in online courses. All of these are very important. Next is outdoor activities. Sometimes taking these elderly people to the nearby parks and uh, nature uh, uh, resorts and uh, some uh, picnic spots, some uh, museums etc. and um, all those things will be helpful. So bird watching, photography, nature walks, 
or exploring local parks can offer relaxation. Managing medications. We know that their health receives uppermost priority. So create a medication. Creating the list of medicines, which medicine is to be taken, when, with what frequency. Using pill organizers so that we can use those containers which are labeled with the days of the week and times of day, etc. Following a proper routine to establish a consistent medication schedule. If necessary, use the alarms or reminders, phone alerts, use of any medication app, etc. will be highly recommended. Understand medications. Know about potential side effects, interactions and any special instructions regarding food or timing. So all these you should take care of. Communicate with healthcare providers. Keep in touch with doctors, pharmacists and healthcare providers to clarify any doubts. Further, monitoring and tracking to keep track of the individual's health so that in case of any deviation, immediately the medical support can be provided. Storage and expiry dates. Storing medications properly in a cool dry place as per the instructions mentioned on the label. Check their expiry date regularly. Dispose of expired medicines safely and immediately. Medication reviews. Periodically review the medication list with the healthcare provider to ensure that it's up to date. Travel preparation. Sometimes the elderly people require to travel. So if traveling, ensure an adequate supply along with prescriptions and a list of medications in case of emergencies. Consider using technology. Explore medication management apps or devices that can help track doses, remind about refills and provide information about medication. Now we come to the fourth segment that is regarding recreational activities with the elderly people on daily basis. Now here walking is first and foremost. Take regular walks together around the neighborhood in a nearby park or just around the house or garden. Chair exercises. We can perform various exercises while seated, focusing on movements that improve flexibility, strength and circulation. Dance can be a very good recreational activity. Put on some music and engage in light dancing. It's a fun way to stay active and also to enjoy. Stretching. Gentle stretching exercises can be done on a daily basis to improve flexibility and reduce stiffness because with the passage of age the muscles become quite rigid and stiff. Yoga or Tai Chi practice simple yoga techniques and movements focused on balance, flexibility and relaxation. There are many sporting activities they can be engaged in such as balloon volleyball, gardening has already been emphasized where it promotes a sense of accomplishment for them. Resistance band exercises. So use resistance bands for gentle strength training exercises. Swimming is considered to be the best exercise. If possible, if accessible, if applicable in case of elderly people, those who know how to swim. So swimming or water aerobics are excellent low impact activities that promote cardiovascular health and muscle strength. Then daily activities encouraging participation in daily activities such as house, household chores such as folding laundry, sweeping or light cleaning that involve some amount of physical movement. But there is a word of caution. Precaution is that it's important to consult with a healthcare professional or a physical therapist to determine the most suitable activities based on the individual's health condition, mobility and any limitation they might have. So friends, in this program, we have been talking about the physical well-being, the mental well exercises, the kind of uh, hobbies that they should pursue, the uh, medication and recreational activities. 
So, in this program, we have seen that why these are important and also we have discussed that how uh, the different types of activities and hobbies which are applicable for elderly people. We talked about how the medication management can take place in case of elderly people and finally we discussed certain recreational activities for elderly.